So this is Fight TV, that was Alexander Ballou. And now we go going back to another title fight. It just continues. I'm gonna have to check to make sure I have my lunch money because I- Did she just I, run your pockets? I could have been beaten up and I didn't Hold know on, it. did she run them? I might have. She, vicious, absolutely vicious. She, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what else to say. A hammer, absolute hammer. And she, she mentioned she, wa she wants to go pro in the near future. So that means she's probably going to, I won't be surprised one title defense and she goes. I'd like to see her defend at once. Yes, most definitely. It's a different angle when you already have the belt and you're defending it. It's a different confidence, different swagger when you're in there. So curious to see how she defends it. Or you might lose your swagger a little bit because you got the bullseye on your back. That's most, yeah, most definitely. And I don't think we have to worry about that with her, but. No. You know, she's very focused, very, like, well-spoken and calm when she's out here. But in there, that intense stare, whoo. My sphincter is still tight. All I have to say is God bless her boyfriend, spouse, whoever. God bless him. He's got to have a safe word. She probably beats He's him He's got to have a safe word. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations to her. Best of luck in the future. Will, we're going to have to do another photo because that was a blurry one. And I'm oh, not, no. I'm not satisfied with that. Scheiser. Awesome. Much better. There we go. Send that to me, Kyle. Will do, sir. Thank you. We got Mr. Jake Davison here in the cage waiting. He's with Hanzo Gracie Latham. We saw Mr. Tommy Marcellino, our local pro, and uh, a member of our Cage Wars ownerships bring him down to the cage. Yeah, and there's been some talk about Cage Wars doing a mixed card pro slash ami cars so in the near future we might see something where we see him in the cage it would be amazing to see a guy like tommy marcelino in here in front of the home crowd or even a guy like matt secor you know there's a lot of local guys who couldn't fight locally for a long time and now they can chris disnell's former champion now pro we can see him in here as a pro now we got jake davis who's throwing over it's josh jones Two and three, middleweight title fight. What can we expect from these two? You know, Jake Davis is a very, very skilled fighter. I don't know much about Josh Jones. The, the reviews have been mixed about him, but Jake Davis is going to be here to fight. You know, he trains over at Hensel Gracie Latham, but he also teaches jiu-jitsu at another school, so he's a very, very adept fighter. Let me tell you, I, and this one question I love asking fighters is when they do train and coach and teach others, how does that affect you in it? evolve you as a, a student because I think when you're teaching and coaching you you're fine tuned you're tuned in a little more on the details you are 100% fine tuned on the details but I've also heard that the flip side of that you know he's more of an assistant instructor but I've heard from some of the guys who own their own schools that can also take away from them as a fighter because they're focusing so much on their other men and women and, and kids programming Ooh, and a little stare down as you go strutting by him Jake Davis is going to be unaffected by that I mean, his nickname is a tactician. That should say everything. Oh, sure. <laughs> He's staring at him. I don't know if you saw it, Will, but the camera wasn't on him because it was on Josh Jones. Um, Jake Davis grabbed his crotch and told him to eat it. <laughs> I missed that. Oh, this is going to be a good one. There must be a little bit of bad blood here. Both big guys. They are very big guys. Big middleweights right here. This is what the average public doesn't understand. The middleweights walk around at 200 pounds usually. Big guys. They're very big guys, and they cut down to 185. Let's see here if we touch go. it up. 
no touch in the middle. Yeah, there's got some tension here. Jake Davis better put that hand up and chin down. Oh, looking for the very wide shot. Jake definitely has the edge grappling here, so it looks like he wants to take it to the ground. Ooh, Josh Jones is throwing some heavy shots. He is, but you waste a lot of energy like that, so, you know, hopefully they're worth it. Jake is just weathering the storm, finding his composure, getting an underhook, body lock. There's that. Put him against the cage. Yep, he locked it up. Good job by Jones, reversing. Yeah, he's doing a good job, went right over the, right, right to the overhooks. Yep. Oh, nice takedown. Good job by Josh. Yeah, he's wizarding pretty strong right there, but the cage is kind of in his way. Yep. And Josh has such long legs, he's posting on that knee. There we go, he took him down. Big takedown by Jake Davis. He's gonna try to wall walk with his feet. Josh Jones, walk a wall walking. For those of you at home don't know what that is, that's taking your feet and walking up the cage and pushing off trying to spin your opponent. And Jake Davis is doing a great job to hold him where he is. Maybe scoot him away from the cage a tad bit. At least his head. And a good job by Josh Jones to get out. That's just athleticism right there. Great this, action. Oh, nice knee to the body by Jake Davis. Yeah, that was an excellent knee yes. as they're, they're moving. Yep. Nice knee in the transition. Now he's in he's in uh he's in half. He's in half guard now. If you notice, Marcelino and Dyson are in the corner, and Bruno Tostes is their instructor, and he, and I mentioned it earlier, he likes to have guys, and they have guards, you can deliver damage. Looks like he's gonna try to take the back or mount. And Jake Davis is in oh, a very position. Oh, he rolls him! Nice reversal by Josh Jones. Didn't see that coming. No, I didn't, because Jake Davis was in a pretty solid position. Hips were low, it was good. Less than a minute. Mike Walter, the third man in the cage. Jake Davis, nice body lock to the takedown. That was a smart move there. Now you're in the need side Need a body, control. need a body. Josh is doing a good job trapping well, the arm, right hand. Yeah, his arm's stuck there. Yep, he's doing a good job. Oh, now, nice transition. Less than 30. Let's see if he can hold out to the end of the round. Well, there's a cut in the top of the head of Josh Jones. Right in the top of the skull. Let's see if he can last 20. Mike Walters got his eyes on it. Nice job by Josh Jones. Nice reversal. We're at the 10 second warning on the first round of this middleweight title fight. What a first round. That, that was, was a great reversal. Yeah, round. these two guys were rolling around. A lot of action between two of the two guys. You know, neither one really rested. Like, not one person, you know, I was satisfied with being on bottom or top. No. There was reversals. We're seeing action. Josh looks a little more tired, though, right now. Jake Davis looks pretty composed. Oh, yeah, and J Josh uh, Jones, you can see he's got that uh, cut on the top of the head. So they're checking. Doctor's trying to pull it apart to see how deep I would say, stop touching me. Yeah, I mean, in order for something like that to stop, it's usually going to, you know, be. It's in not the, bleeding too yeah, bad. And yeah. it's going to be in the fighter's eye and, and, and inhibiting vision. That's the only way they're gonna stop it right now. And Mike Walters telling him, just make sure you watch the uh, no knees to the head. You are allowed to knee to the body. I don't think he landed any, but it was close. Yeah, it was close. On that transition knee, he hit him in the body. But it was close. And I would have to agree 100% with you, starting round two. Josh Jones looks a little bit more fatigued than Chris, uh, I mean, Jake Davis, excuse me. Well, he oh, to, he wanted to use the cage right there. Did you he see had that? to do a lot more escaping out of things than Jake did. You see him look to see where the cage was and then oh, try yeah. to do the Superman off it? That's that Anthony Pettis. Yep. Over under for Jones. Jake's trying to sink those legs for that double. Jake Davis in the red and black shorts, Josh Jones in the white and black shorts. Jake Davis has got the body lock, trying to land some knees to the legs, but I know he wants to take down, but he's got to bring those hips a little, a little tighter. Right there. Oh, nice, nice takedown. Right to side control, nice takedown. And if you look, Josh is tired. He's staying on his back where before he was trying to get to a hip. Mm-hmm. 
Jake Davis looking right to go, looking to go right into. You know, he does a phenomenal job putting the knee right in the waist, kind of hold him there so yes. he can try and move right into full full uh, mount, right, like just like he did. All the guys from Henzo Gracie Lee at the map have heavy hips. And you cannot throw elbows, ladies and gentlemen. No elbows are allowed, no matter where you are in the, the fight. Nope, just knees to the body and no knees to the head. That's what makes amateurs different than pros besides the five minute limit. If you notice, he's looking for Jones' right arm, or left arm. And he just scooped the head and almost rolled. Oh, oh he just put back. himself in a bad Looking for that rear naked. Is he gonna finish this? He's got it deep. I don't Does see him getting out of this. Chin? Is he getting out? Mike Walter's looking. Josh Jones trying to work two on one. He's got to turn into his opponent, but Jake Davis has a body lock on him, which makes it almost impossible to turn. It's only a matter of time. And tap, tap, what one naked tap. tap. What a tap. Impressive win. It was. And that first round was all over the place, and then Jake Davis coming through. You know, he took advantage of, you know, the re bad reversal, took the back, and just worked it from there. Uh, again, just what the was was what his nickname says. He's the tactician. Yep, that body lock someone. set that rear naked choke up. Yep, technique will always win. No situations. So Jake Davis is improving to 4-0 in his career, and he is the middleweight title champion. And that brings us to our co-main event of the evening. That's exciting. It is, and it's 5-11. I'm very excited to see Cody's opponent in this next fight. And now to the official scorecard. At one minute, 48 seconds into the second round, by way of a rear naked choke submission for your winner. And the new Cage Wars champion, he is the technician, Jake Davis. Jake Davis. Champion at middleweight for Cage Wars. Impressive victory. Like the uh, ring announcer said, it came by rear naked choke at 148 in round two. Can't, cannot under underemphasize that body lock though. That body lock was what set that neck up for him. If he did not have that body lock in, that rear naked choke would not have been nearly as easy. Well, I agree 100%. The body lock is cruel. You know, it's like a boa constrictor, you know, makes it tougher to breathe. So you're not thinking about just the hands were trying to choke you. You're thinking about the body, the breathing. The, there's a lot going on when that happens. And the defense to that rear naked choke is to spin into your opponent most times. Mm -hmm. When that body lock is on, you can't spin. You can't do much. You are stuck. What most people have to do is push that leg off and get a leg off of you. Otherwise, what's going to happen is just what happens. Yep. So I think we're going to get we're going to get Jake Davis over here. We're going to interview him. I'll give him up the headset. <laughs> 